Ladies and gentlemen, it's a summery day here in the Netherlands, but we are still here in the studio of the first click show talking about the road to WWDC. In exactly seven days, ladies and gentlemen, exactly seven days, we will be sitting here watching WWDC, which is absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen. Uh, obviously, we're expecting uh, some hardware, but a lot of software. On a side note, we have a show called The Airdrop right here on this channel as well. So definitely subscribe because there we're going to dissect again every single thing that we expect on WWDC. Stay tuned to the channel because there is so much more coming. And for now, let's just click straight into the news articles. We got a report coming in from iMore, actually a quite predictable report, but it's still very interesting to see that it actually came out. Uh, iMore is actually talking about the iOS 14 app tracking transparency features. According to this report, a lot of people are actually declining loads of apps to actually follow them around on their phone. And this in turn caused the advertisement market at least on ios to tumble now i'm not saying i'm happy about this because people losing business obviously is not a thing to celebrate but something that i do celebrate is people getting the controls back and yeah this is a side effect of that it's a sad side effect but what i believe is even worse is that we have been going on silently with a market that's actually ill it's actually that sick that right now you see people actually losing so much business over people getting their controls back over their life and data. Now we're talking about a 36% downfall according to this article in the UK alone. So that is definitely a lot of money and a lot of businesses obviously losing that money, maybe job opportunities for people that were on the table and might disappear right now. But I feel like it's also an opportunity to look forward into a future where we can actually control our data and still help developers create insane apps, innovative apps, maybe through installments like payments, or maybe you do want to share your data, but every app will be treated like separately and individually by the user and see if it's worth it or not. If it's not, then let the developer know and maybe they can build in some options for you to pay for it directly. Like this stuff, like the 36% is obviously a lot, but I hope it's just something that's temporarily and that we can pick it back up. I hope Apple is going to educate loads of developers and companies to look for a brighter future where everyone has their controls over their data again and we still make loads of money we still make innovative apps and we're still out there creating loads of insane experiences now back to the article though research conducted by imor actually suggests that only two percent of the entire user base that obviously cooperated with this research have actually allowed certain apps to track them. So that is only 2% and that is not much. That is not much. And obviously we're just talking about one company doing some research, but that is still a terrifying number, especially if you are, for example, Facebook. And then we got CNBC actually reporting on Apple and their huge success on Apple CarPlay. According to CNBC, this paves the way for more ambitious automotive projects by Apple. Now, according to this article, 23% of new buyers in the US are actually saying it's an essential feature of the car. And 56% are saying they're definitely interested in such features but it's not a deal breaker and that shows in the actual reports of people buying cars because over 80 percent of new cars being bought around the world support apple carplay so this is definitely interesting news we have had so many rumors of some sort of apple car releasing someday in the future nobody knows if that is still going to happen a lot of people said that entire teams were fired or relocated onto other projects so i don't know if that's still on the table or if it just went back to research and development instead of actually testing and actively working on the project nobody knows but for now obviously this is a good sign for everyone who's dreaming about having an apple car and then we got pc gamer actually coming in with an article that i kind of agree with like intel is burning all its bridges with apple and i understand that the ceo has been calling it competitive fun but you have to understand that intel obviously worked with apple on other products like for example the technology thunderbolt is something that apple invested so much time and money in obviously in collaboration with intel but these are things that are probably not going to happen with intel anymore if they're going to act this way now obviously this article is not talking about thunderbolt but this is just stuff that i feel like it's so 
It's such a weird manner of doing business. But anyways, let's just go into the article. In a recent call with Intel's Ryan Shroud about the performance of its 11th generation H series laptop processors, he took some time out to throw some serious shade Apple's way. Actually, it was throwing shade around as if it was going out of fashion with AMD, ARM and Apple all getting some. Now, this is absolutely crazy, right? Because obviously they are competitors and I completely understand that you want to be competitive. You want to have a competitive voice in the market. But this is not the way to do it. Obviously, you can throw some shade, right? Just like, for example, on an Apple event where they're saying that they have been able to shrink their BV cooling system because they replaced the chip. But what Intel is doing right here is more like Coke actually acknowledging Pepsi, which they never do, right? The other way around, Pepsi obviously acknowledges Coca-Cola for a really, really long time. They've been doing that for years, which is probably one of the reasons why that brand is not as strong, obviously as Coca-Cola. So you can do it once or twice, but now it just gets annoying. And they keep bombarding the M1, the low power chip, and comparing it with their professional grade chipsets that they put into gaming machines. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a little bit of a prediction here when the actual chips that Apple is going to put against the i7 and i9 are going to be released. Whatever is going to be in these slides is going to be bullshit. I'm just saying it outright, bullshit. So obviously the M1, a low powered chip that is obviously built for low powered devices like an iPad, an iPad and a MacBook Air and an entry level Mac mini and an entry level iMac is not meant and it's not targeted at the same audience that an i7 and an i9 is being targeted at. I don't understand. Maybe it's just me. I like <laughs> It's completely mental, for me at least, and maybe you guys understand it better. Leave a comment down below if you understand where this is coming from and what the game plan is, because obviously either I'm too stupid to understand or they are too dumb to see what they're getting themselves into. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode of The Road to WWDC, but we're still counting down. Six days, 18 hours, 95 minutes, and 95 seconds. Let's roll the countdown.